This is a Cisco switch. It's an old Catalyst 3750. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to physically console into it and how to configure this device. So there's two main parts of a switch. So you have the physical switch itself like this, and you have power supply. So if you look at the back of this switch, it has two gaps like this. And this is for two power supplies. So today we're only gonna use one, but it has two slots for power supplies for redundancy. In case one power supply fails, it has another one for failover. Okay, so we're just gonna take the power supply. I'm just gonna put it in like this. Then we're gonna take this cord, the power supply cable, and we're just gonna plug it in. So once I plug it in, you're gonna notice that the switch turns on automatically. Yep, and it's gonna get loud. So something about switches actually that I found interesting is that there's actually no on button. So only way to turn it off and on is to unplug it and then plug it back in or use like the reload command when you're console into it. We're gonna wait for this thing to boot up. Since it's old, it's gonna take some time. Um, and after that, we're gonna console into it. So to actually console into the switch, you're gonna need a console cable like this. So one side looks like it's like RJ45 and the other side is just like USB. So you're gonna plug in the RJ45 to the switch, to a console port in the switch. And you're gonna plug in the USB side to a laptop or a computer. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So in the back here, you're gonna see this port. So this port is just, I, don't, I actually don't know what this port is, but this is the console port right here. You're gonna plug this into the console port. You're gonna take this side and you're gonna plug it into your device like this. Okay, so now that we've plugged in the console port from the switch to the PC, let's go to the PC and click device manager. You're gonna go to ports, USB serial port, COM5. So just remember, note that down, COM5. We open up PuTTY, serial, serial on, COM5. Leave the speed as 9600. Well, the speed actually depends on the type of switch, but for this switch, it's 9600 is good. And there we go. And now we're in the switch. This is just the command line. This is the command line where we're gonna do all our switch configurations. So the first thing we wanna do when we get a new switch is to name the switch. So let's go enable. Uh, let's go into global config mode. We can use the command host name and then the name we wanna use for the switch. So in our case, let's do host name switch one, enter. And you'll see on the left side, instead of saying switch, it says switch one because now it has a name. So the next thing we wanna do after naming is you wanna set a password for the switch. We wanna set a password for the switch so that no random can just console into it and start changing some configuration. You can do this by using the command enable password and then the password you wanna use. So there, and we press end exit. Then next time we wanna cons next time we console into the switch, we press enable, we're prompted to put a password in. Epic password. When we configure the password in this way, there's one problem. Let me show you. Let me go show run. So show the running config on the device. This is the password that we configured, right? Epic password. The problem with this is that Epic password is in plain text. It's not encrypted. This is not good because you don't want your password in plain text anywhere. So in order to make this command encrypted, we can go enable first let's remove this command and then we can go enable instead of using password as the second keyword we go secret and then the password that we want to do this makes it so that when it's stored in the running config it's encrypted so if we go show running config it shows enable secret and then um it's just it's encrypted so you won't be able to know what the password is which is good Okay, so now that we've configured a host name and we've configured a password for the switch, the next thing we wanna do is configure the VLANs on the switch. To do this, we go into global configure mode again, and it's really easy to configure VLANs. You just go VLAN and then the VLAN number. So if we press question mark here, you'll see uh, here, VLAN IDs one to 4094. This is the range of numbers you can assign to a VLAN. So in this case, we'll use VLAN 10. And once we're in VLAN configuration mode, we can also name the VLAN with the command name and then the name of the VLAN. So name HR. And then let's also create another VLAN, VLAN 20, name sales. So in addition to the HR and the sales VLANs, 
We're also going to create another VLAN, VLAN 99, and we're going to name it management. So now if we do the command show VLAN brief, we'll see that we have three new VLANs, HR VLAN 10, sales VLAN 20, and the management VLAN in VLAN 99. And you also notice that there's a VLAN 1 here. This is the default VLAN. This is where all the ports are in by default. Now it's time to move some of these ports into our new VLANs. Let's go back to the physical switch and plug in some ethernet cables. All right, so in the topology today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the first two ports. We're gonna use ports one and two, and we're gonna connect one of them to my MacBook and one of them to my other laptop here. Okay, well this one, over here. Over here. As you can see, they're both plugged in, one to each device, and now let's go back to the configuration. So in our network, we have gigabit port 101 connected to my MacBook, and we have gigabit 102 connected to my Windows laptop. So let's assign these VLANs. Well, actually, but first, before we assign the VLANs, let's see if the switch can see our devices. So we can go show Mac address address table press enter and we will see yes these two so right now they're in vlan 1 by default and this is my windows laptop and this is my macbook right let's go to command prompt and confirm this let's go ip config slash all yeah see um, my ethernet adapter uses the mac address physical address is mac address by the way it is, yeah, it lines up. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. It lines up with this one because port two is my Windows laptop. It's this one. So that means the switch can see my laptop. Let's actually go into assigning VLANs to the interfaces. Let's go back into global config mode. Let's interface into one port one. This is the port that's connected to my MacBook. Okay, so we're going to go into interface GI 101, 101, and we're going to use the command switch port mode access. So notice here how we're specifying that this switch port should act as an access port. What is an access port? An access port is a port that can carry one VLAN, and there's another type of port, it's called a trunk port, which can carry multiple VLANs. So the difference between these two also was going to take a whole video to explain, but basically, access ports one vlan trunk ports multiple vlans and we're going to configure switch port access vlan 10. so this port is going to be an access port with vlan 10 assigned to it now let's go to uh, port 2 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20. now these two ports have uh, VLAN 10 assigned and VLAN 20 assigned. So if we go back to show VLAN brief, you'll notice here, look, in VLAN 10, you have GI1 GI1 slash 0 slash 1, and in VLAN 20, you have this port. So that's how you know that you've assigned the VLANs properly. Alright, so before we continue, I'm going to assign the IP addresses to our devices. So now that we have the IP addresses set, we should be able to ping the two PCs, right? So let's try ping 192.168.20.2. Right, so as you can see here, the ping failed. All four pings failed. Why? Did we make a mistake or something? Did we make a mistake? Did we make a configuration error? Did we set the IP addresses wrong? No. By default, devices in different VLANs can't communicate with each other. This is because they're in different networks. They're in completely different networks. VLAN 10 is on a completely different network than VLAN 20. So what do you need to connect two different networks or two different LANs? You need a router. So if you want devices from two different VLANs to communicate with each other, you need a router. And the way to do it with a router is something called a router on a stick, which is something I won't go into in this video. but what we will do in this video is how to do inter VLAN routing without a router. Well, technically it is a router because the switch that we have, this Cisco Catalyst 30, 3750, it's a layer three switch, 
which means it's capable of routing. So it's like kind of like a router. For inter VLAN routing with a layer three switch to work, we need to create SVIs, switched virtual interfaces. And I'll show you guys how to do that here. So we go back to global config mode. Before the command we used to create VLANs was VLAN and then the VLAN number. To create an SVI, it's interface VLAN and then the number. So now you're in the interface config mode for VLAN 10. And now we will we will assign an IP address to this interface VLAN. IP add 192.168.10.1 and then the subnet mask. This interface is basically the default gateway of VLAN 10. Now let's do the same for VLAN 20. IP add 192.168.20.1 All right, by default, layer three switches have their routing ability disabled. So if we want to enable it, we have to do the command IP routing. And now we can do show, now we can do show IP route. Okay, so you'll see these routes in the routing table. What does this mean? Well, what, what, is, what is a routing table? A routing table is what the switch will use or a router will use to forward traffic. Okay, let's take this topology. This is our topology. We have my MacBook in VLAN 10 connected to port one, and we have the Windows laptop connected to port two in VLAN 20. So what happens when my MacBook wants to send a ping to here? Since we've configured the switch virtual interfaces, when the MacBook sends a ping, so let's say for example, it uses the command ping 192.168.10 or .20.2, the ping will automatically go to the default gateway first because the PC knows, the MacBook knows that this IP address is not in the same network as I am. So it'll automatically send it to the default gateway to the switch the switch will check the routing table and see if it knows where this IP address is. And then if it does, it'll send it out of that port and then it'll make it to the Windows laptop. Let's configure our device's default gateways to be our switch SVIs. So 192.168.20.1. This is the IP address of the SVI on our switch. So now let's go to the MacBook. Let's go to settings. Go to network details and now let's change this to the svi ip address which is one so now that everything is configured properly we should be able to ping the macbook so ping 10 dot oh ping 192.168.10.2 might take a bit for arp to Hello? It can't. Okay, hold on. Let me just let me just figure this out. All right. So the problem why I wasn't able to ping was because of firewall. <laughs> so I had to disable the firewall, um, and now I'm able to ping. This is VLAN 10's SVI. This is, and this is the MacBook. All right. So able to ping. Now let's just double check on the MacBook. See if we're able to ping this. Ping. 168.20.1 so VLAN 20's SVI yep it's good okay all right it's enough what the heck 192.168.20.2 this is the Windows laptop IP address and it's able to ping so now we have two devices in two different VLANs and they're able to ping each other through their SVIs through inter VLAN routing Okay, so now you know how to do the basic configurations of a switch. So to recap, let's just do show run and see everything that we configured. Starting off with host name. We learned how to configure the host name. We did host name and we named it switch one. And then we did the switch password. So instead of saying enable password, you do enable secret so that the password is not stored in plain text in the running config. Then we turned on IP routing so that the layer switch the layer 3 switch knows to use its layer 3 capabilities we created vlans and made svis for them and assigned ip addresses and then we assigned the vlans to the interfaces that 
we wanted them to. So yeah, this is all the basic configurations of a switch. If you want more videos like this, just let me know. Uh, so for now, uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.